What is going on everyone and welcome to a special video on my channel. Now the other day we hit 30,000 subscribers which is an insane number so I've got to say thank you to each and every one of you for your incredible support and to celebrate that milestone I've decided to put together a r slash entitled parents movie of sorts. So this one hour 40 minute video will be a compilation of the very best r slash entitled parents stories that have been read out on the channel so far. With that being said, I hope you enjoy and let's start with an absolute classic. Let me have your £50,000 car because my daughter works harder than you. Before we start, here's some proof that I do actually own a Porsche and that this isn't just a repeat of r slash that happened. And here is that proof. That's a lovely car, I must say. Firstly, a little bit of background. I'm 29 and I'm an architect in the UK. It's good money and I've been in the job for four years. It's hard work though and I do overtime most days. It's a rewarding profession though and it's what I love doing. All in all, life's good. Recently, I decided to treat myself to a Porsche 718 Cayman as we saw in the photo. It's one of my favorite car brands and I've always liked cars, so it's understandably one of my most prized possessions. So I'm pretty protective of it. One week, we had extended family come over to town, not disclosing the name. It consists of my aunt and her children, whom I rarely ever see. Notwithstanding the fact that I rarely see them, I know that the aunt and her daughter are, well, difficult chapettes. My aunt's 48 right now, she was born 14 years after my mum when my grandparents decided upon having another child. Her children are 10 and 8. The 8 year old's a boy and we get on really well. He's interested in architecture so I often tell him about my work when I do get to see him, which is rare. The 10 year old daughter, conversely, is an entitled brat who's caused me and my mum nothing but trouble whenever we've seen her. I once caught her in my study just about to draw all over some of my plans. However, I pulled her away just in time, thank frick. I of course got screamed at for, but I just had to bite the bullet. Anyway, when they did come over, I was pretty much forced to host the whole thing at my house. It's not exactly a sizable place, but it's cosy and big enough for a few people. Everything was going well until I had to go into work for a brief meeting that I couldn't avoid. It was a pretty crucial meeting too. It was about a project that was nearing completion and the whole practice was under great pressure. This exchange begins when I head out of the front door. I unlock my car but then remember that I left my briefcase in the kitchen so I head back into the house to grab it quickly, leaving the car unlocked as it's a nice neighborhood and I wouldn't be gone long. As soon as I reach the hallway, I hear giggling. This is how the following moments went down. EK entitled kid, EM entitled mother, and me. Hey there, EK. Look, I'm sorry to interrupt your fun, but you're not supposed to be in the driver's seat right now. I've got a meeting to attend. No, I'm not leaving. You have to. I need to go to work. At this point, I'm struggling to cope, but I manage to put on a stoic facade and exude some authority. Then EM says, Oh, come on. Let her play in the car. I don't think you get that I have a meeting. But she's a good kid. Your meeting's not that important, right? Yes, it is. You know my work field and that I can't afford to waste time. But it's not. How is doodling so- <laughs> Doodling? How is doodling so important? I mean, when architecture is labelled as doodling, you know this mother has issues. Because it earns me 50 grand a year, and it's more than just doodling. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a meeting to attend. EK overhears the exchange and now starts playing with the horn, beeping it constantly. I start to reach into the car to take her hands away from the wheel as she's causing a real disturbance and being rather rough with my car. It was at this moment that Entitled Mother became stage 2 Karen. Get off my daughter! This is my car and she is causing a disturbance. I'm within my rights to take her hands away from the wheel. No! She can play in your car all she wants. She deserves your car. She works harder than you. She doesn't just scribble and call it a job. Let me play! EK then begins to start kicking and screaming in the car. Mind you, she went to the park earlier, so mud's getting all over the expensive interior. My blood is also boiling, because architecture is more than just scribbling. Some of the designs are so intricate, you need a whole room to fit the page. For what it's worth, I've done some work experience at an architect's firm, and it's very in-depth, the stuff they do. I would be awful at it. It was at this point that I snapped. Alright, get out of my effing car this instant, or I swear to god, I'll make sure neither of you ever drive a car, ever. I was about to continue screaming, but then I thought better of it, and just stood there, breathing heavily, as I watched my dream car get overrun by this EM and her spawn. EM now decides to get into my Porsche also, taking over the driver's seat. The EK moves to the passenger seat. EM, this car will be ours now, good day. I think we're more deserving of this car than you. It was at this moment that my neighbour, a policeman, came out to check what was going on. 
It is worth noting that I've known this guy since I was a kid and he is a legend. He knows that I'm usually a calm person and it takes a good bit for me to snap. He also knew that I tended to get very distressed in certain situations. I suffer from Asperger's syndrome. Social situations like this are very hard for me to cope with. I find it difficult enough sometimes to socialize with people when we're both rational, let alone when someone's about to take my goddamn Porsche. So the policeman says, what's the commotion about? I heard beeping and screaming. EM says, this man is trying to steal our car. Yeah! It happens that PN actually accompanied me to the sale of the Porsche because I was quite nervous on the day. Understandable due to the fact that the car cost me £50,000 and due to the fact that I was quite anxious about the deal as a whole due to the aforementioned reason. We look at each other and he grins at me. I'm awful at reading facial expressions but I've known this guy long enough to know that this grin is his I've got an awesome plan face. Okay, if it's your car, what's the number plate? PN knows that I have my number play and memorized. Additionally, PN also knows that this is one of the first times EN has seen this car, so she couldn't have memorized her license plate. EM at this point grabs her kid and tries to run off. However, when she ambles out of my Porsche, PN stops her. I'm going to have to question you and potentially charge you for attempted theft, as you and your child occupied this man's car without permission. Come with me. The EM was then taken off to the police station and EK went back in the house and threw a tantrum in there. Fortunately, there wasn't too much mud in the Porsche as it was a dry day, so the dirt wasn't anything a leather wipe couldn't fix. If it was wet mud, then that would have been a totally different story. EM ended up being charged with attempted theft and was fined £1,000 alongside being given 50 hours of community service. I haven't seen EM or EK since, but I have seen the other kid of hers since. He was in the care of a family friend for two weeks while EM went to Vegas. I don't know where the EK went. And I'm glad to say that he isn't at all adopting EM's ways. Well, that is good news. I ended up getting to the meeting on time with a few minutes to spare and getting a raise due to my contribution to the project. My practice also paid for my car's maintenance as the leather was a bit scuffed up, even though they totally didn't have to. Me and my boss get on really well, which is amazing. Entitled mum holds up bus for over 30 minutes to get food for her kids, ends up getting kicked off. For a bit of background information, I live a good three and a half hours from my dad and my mum slash stepdad. I can't drive, so when I need to go up to them, I usually get a bus ticket since they're relatively cheap and I've never had a problem with them. Since it's a long drive, the bus takes a small break in a city about 45 minutes away from town. When this happens, the bus will pull up to a gas station that also is one of the bus stops and the driver will announce where we are and that we'll be there for 10 to 15 minutes so we can get out and stretch our legs or go to the gas station to use the restroom or buy some snacks. When this happened, I was heading back to my town, so I've already been on the bus for a few hours already. When I first got on, I was the only one, but at the other stops before the gas station, some other people got on. No one's super noticeable, but I wasn't really paying too much attention. Mainly students or people my age, but there was also a, what I assumed to be, mother and her two kids. I was sitting in the very back with earphones in and playing on my Switch, so again, not paying too much attention. Anyways, we get to the stop and the driver announces where we are and that we're taking a small 10 minute break so we can get out and do whatever. I stay in my seat since I'm pretty deep into my game and don't need anything, but notice some people get off the bus, including the mum and her kids. About 10 minutes pass and the bus driver gets back on and starts counting everyone. I'm pretty sure he has a list of everyone or how many people that are supposed to be on the bus and gets back to the front of the bus and announces he's missing three people. Hint, it's the mum and her kids, so we can't leave until they get back. Great. I go back to playing Zelda on my Switch. I'm not super bothered since I think they'll be back soon and the buses have outlets so I can charge my phone and switch. They get back 30 minutes later. I'm not sure the bus driver called them or something, but when the mum steps on the bus, the driver is obviously annoyed and asks her where she was. The conversation went like this. The bus driver. Mom, where were you? We've been waiting for half an hour. We were getting food. My children are hungry and we stopped for a break. She motions to her kids, who both had bags from a fast food joint. The break was 10 minutes. You were gone for 40. Please try to not hold up the bus again. I have a schedule to follow. You're free to stretch or use the gas station for a bathroom break or snacks, so please don't do that again. This is when all heck breaks loose. 
Wow, my children need real food, not chips or whatever poop that place has. If anything, your breaks should be longer. Sorry, mom, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And if I get behind on one trip, I'll get behind on the others. Please take a seat and I'll start driving. No, this is unacceptable. I'll have you fired, you... Insert many, many derogatory slurs here. Mom, one more time. Sit down so I can continue driving. F off. I'll get your bum fired. Okay, fine. Get off or I'm calling the police. Fine. Call them. I'll get your stupid bum deported. The bus driver is Mexican and has an accent, which I am not going to try and replicate. So he calls them. They show up within a few minutes and BD and EM and her kids get off to talk to the police. So I'm not sure what they said, but after a few minutes, she storms onto the bus grabs her bags and stomps off the bus. Seriously, the whole bus was shaking. I asked the guy a few rows in front of me what happened out there and the police obviously took BD's side and told EM they'll find a way to get her to her location but she can't use this mode of transport. She cussed up a storm at them but they just told her to get her bags and come with them. After she and her kids left, BD got back on the bus, apologized for the way and started driving again. The rest of the ride went smoothly and I got back home late but overall okay. Ugh, the end, I guess. According to EMs, only their time is important. Everything else is irrelevant. And if you try to defy her, you're wrong and an idiot. Entitled mum loses it over playground closing for contamination. This happened all the way back in February 2014, so my memory might be a little fuzzy on some details. I'll do my best with what I can remember. I've dealt with entitled spouses while I was a hospital corpsman in the Navy. You know, the I'm the wife of an officer, so I deserve special treatment like being saluted kind of spouses. But holy cow, this entitled mum was something else and my first encounter with one. I've been working at Chick-fil-A while going to college for over a year. I had left the military shortly before then, so this was a huge change for me being out in the civilian world, being a military brat and all. I had a few encounters with some very rude people just trying to get free meals, but otherwise things were fine. One day, a group of kids with their parents entered our establishment for a birthday party. I can't recall if we had been told about this beforehand. We've had people come in before for birthday celebrations, but those were mostly folks that had come in with presents to open while they dine in some chicken, then leave. Not this group though. Enter Entitled Mother. I'm just gonna say, those three words scare me to death. She came up to the front counter and asked us to set up the tables and such. EM was polite to us at first. If only we freaking knew what was gonna happen later. But for now, things were calm. Thankfully, the party had arrived before our usual dinner rush. Our restaurant was stationed right outside a huge Air Force base. So me and a few other employees had time to, well, push some tables and chairs together. Easy stuff. I understand the parents were busy making sure the kids stayed together and didn't cause trouble. After that, EM came up to me asking about Chick-fil-A's birthday package. I had no idea what CFA's birthday package was as ours didn't have one, as I found out after talking to my supervisor. But apparently some restaurants have them and EM assumed ours did too. She was disappointed finding out we didn't. The next thing EM asked us to do, if possible, was to provide balloons for the kids. I asked my supervisor if that would be okay and was granted permission to give them some. The party had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme, so I tried my best sticking to the TMNT colours with the coloured balloons we have. I made maybe about a dozen of them, took them over to the tables and spent a couple minutes tying the balloons to the chairs. A couple more things EM asked before poop literally hits the fan. I'll be getting to it soon, so hold on to your butts. EM kept bringing up things from the birthday package that, as my supervisor had told her earlier, we don't do in our restaurant. One thing these CFA birthday packages provide is a free cookie sundae for the birthday kid. EM was bordering on being insistent on getting a free sundae for her boy. I thought that cake would be enough. I can't remember if they actually brought a cake with them, but I guess it wasn't for EM. I have a soft spot for kids and I tend to spoil my friends and family on their birthdays. We still couldn't get them a free Sunday, but I decided to pay for it right then so the kid could get his Sunday. Just to please the kid who was really sweet and polite for his age, not EM. EM was pleased as punch and was oh so thankful for my kindness. The final thing EM asked us to do was sing the happy birthday song for her kid. At this time, we were starting to get a little bit of dinner traffic. I asked my supervisor again for permission and was given the AOK, -okay, granted that the customers would be taken care of first and someone would stay at the register. Two employees join me and we go out there clapping and singing. The party had been going well. Kids were having a great time and EM seemed pretty pleased that we were going above and beyond fulfilling her requests. 
boy did that not last. Now we get to the bad part when EM blows up. CFA has an indoor playground, much like McDonald's. Some kids were inside playing during the party. Note that not a single adult was in there supervising them. One of the kids, I think a toddler, decided to get, shall I say, creative on the walls with their own special crayon. I believe one of the parents went in to find their kid and found the results, and then reported it to one of the employees. Now, I'm sure some of you will know how this next part goes. We can't be having kids playing in an enclosed playground without poop smeared on the walls. And as we discovered soon during inspection, inside the big toy and the slide too, oh that's disgusting. As part of our safety protocol, we have to get everyone out and keep them out. Decontaminate the area, bleach being one of the cleaners, which you know, isn't safe for kids, and leave the playground closed for around two to four hours. Like lock the door and block it off so kids can't get in. EM was livid. She demanded that we let the kids back in, especially her birthday boy, and tried to move the barricade in front of the door, one of those cases that holds shoes. It's his special day and he deserves to play, darn. Well, there was an outside playground just across the street from the restaurant, but I guess that wasn't good enough for EM. We explained to her that we couldn't and that it's not safe for kids to be playing in an area that was just cleaned up using chemicals that could harm them. And you know, feces had been smeared on the walls, but nope. This was unacceptable to EM. She started screaming about how horrible we all were, pointing to me and my co-workers who had helped set up the party, and Singh, and my supervisor. We're a bunch of bums who had ruined her boy's birthday. She threatened to call the CEO of CFA and have the restaurant permanently closed. Not just have us all fired, the entire goddamn place shut down. She said a few more nasty things I don't remember exactly before she grabbed her kid by the arm and stormed off. I believe she did end up going to the playground across the street. Also, the other parents took their kids and left while EM was in the middle of her tantrum. Funny thing is that our restaurant was actually closing for a few months for renovations. I wouldn't be surprised if EM drove by and smiled smugly seeing the restaurant closed. Maybe even told her friends how she'd gotten it shut down because of how horrible we were to her and her kid. Not long after this incident, I ended up quitting for reasons not related to this and moving to a different town a half hour away. Never bumped into EM again and never stepped foot in the restaurant whenever I visit. I wonder how that kid is doing and I hope to God he hasn't picked up his mother's entitlement. The world doesn't need more entitled people, especially parents, who treat folks just barely making minimum wage like poop being smeared on a wall. Entitled mother complains to my boss and he finds me for not selling tobacco and beer to her underage kid. This story could have been posted at r slash tales from retail, but as we all know, entitled parents are everywhere. That is so true. A quick backstory. About 10 years ago, I was working in an alcohol and tobacco shop. It was a temporary job which could have lasted for a longer time, but the boss ended up being a cheap douchebag whom I dealt with later. The story I will post in the near future under r slash pro revenge. It wasn't hard, four days a week, 4 p.m. to 1 a.m., 15 euros per day, but hey, it was still okay for an 18 year old kid who was still in high school. Besides, the shop is in a block of flats across the street of mine and I had free Wi-Fi, so it was cool. Now, since this was a local shop, there were regular customers, mostly smokers, who came to get their pack of cigarettes. Also, the legal age in Bulgaria for buying and consuming alcohol and tobacco is 18, and there was a sign that none would be sold to minors, but nobody cared about that. Nobody but me. I have a strong moral compass and was raised to uphold the law, no matter the consequences. So here's the cast. Me, SK, who was a shy kid about 9 to 10 years old, F, a friend and a co-worker at the time, EM, entitled mother, if one could call her mother at all, and boss, the shop owner and general manager. So there I was, at the register, minding my own business. Enter shy kid, SK, a 9 or 10 year old shy boy with a good smile. He went to one of the fridges, got a 2 litre bottle of beer, it can be sold in Bulgaria in plastic bottles of up to 2 litres, came to the register and asked for two packs of Marlboro cigarettes. Now, I don't remember the conversations were word for word, but all of it was mostly like this. I'm sorry kid, but I cannot allow you to take the beer and cigarettes. But why? It's against the law. You must be at least 18 to be able to buy them. My mum sent me, and F has always sold me those. I'm sorry to hear that, but just because she has doesn't mean it's right. Also, do you see the big sign above my head? It says it's illegal to sell alcohol and tobacco products to people under 18 years. Sorry kid. I smiled to SK. He smiled too, said good day and went out of the store. He was a good kid and I thought to myself that his mum is not much of a parent since she teaches him to break the law from an early age. It took less than 10 minutes and here comes mother monster, EM. She stormed into the shop and started. 
who do you think you are? Excuse me? Who do you think you are for not sending my kid the things I asked him for? Mom, it's against the law. You can see the sign above me. Alcohol and tobacco are not allowed for people under 18 years old. Then EM said sarcastically, They're not allowed? What are you, a policeman or something? I don't need to be a policeman to uphold the law. I don't give a damn about the law. F and everyone else sell cigarettes and beer to my kid. And you made me come here and get them. As if I don't have a more important job than dealing with your laws. Just because they do it doesn't mean they're right. Now, you came for a beer bottle and two packs of Marlboro cigarettes. You can buy them and I'll be more than glad to sell the items to you, but I will not sell them to your son, who's nine years old. The law is the law. EM grabbed the items and said in a rude and disgusting tone, No wonder our country is so poor. People like you ruin it because you think you're better than the others. Now, this pissed me off because Bulgaria has an overly corrupt government and no one cares about any laws. So I responded in a calm but hardened tone. Our country is so bad, not because of people like me, but people like you. People who teach their kids from an early age to break the law. If there were more people like me who respected and upheld the law, we wouldn't be like this at the moment. That is so right. Your boy is not supposed to get them and there can be real trouble out of this. A fine for you for asking me to sell the items to your child, a fine for me for selling them, and a fine for my boss for allowing this in the shop. Keep this in mind when you send your boy to break the law because you don't want to go to the shop yourself. She lives in the same block of flats where the shop is located. You you will see. I will get you fired. I know the owner of the shop. Do it if you wish. This doesn't mean I'm not right. The law is the law. EM goes out of the shop. In some time, I receive a call from my boss. He yelled at me for not selling the items to the kid and being rude and obnoxious to the customer, and I shouldn't feel more special than everyone else. He then proceeded to fine me with 30 euros for pushing the customers away from the shops, as if I'd worked for two days for free. When I protested, stating that cameras would show everything and I might complain to the police, he said that he had control over the recordings, the camera could go faulty and some recordings could be lost, and that I should be lucky I still have the job because he was understaffed and desperately needed employees. He also said later that the sign is for tax agents who were frequently coming to inspect the shop and he was obliged to put it up. I didn't do anything about this at the time because this was not the first time he would find me for BS reasons and dealing with drunk and entitled customers, and I was planning to take him down with a sweet pro revenge, but this is a story for another day. I need to hear this story. This guy needs to get destroyed. I wonder if this guy's boss has a lot of back problems, given he has absolutely no sign of a spine. I hope OP left as soon as he could, because this boss sounds awful to work under. Stupid parks in front of my driveway and gets instant karma. So there's a garage on the left hand side of my house where I park my car and a driveway in front of it so the car can get inside. It's exactly like any other garage and it's part of my property, yet some people feel that they're entitled enough to park just anywhere, including right in front of my effing driveway. EM entitled mum, me, me, and EC entitled child. It starts off when I'm about to go to the convenience store to get snacks and I notice there's a car literally parked right smack in the middle of my driveway. There's no way my car could possibly get around and I wasn't having any of it. So I yelled, who the F owns this car? And started blasting my horn. It took a while for someone to finally react and it just so happened to be the entitled who owned the car. Apparently she was a mum of two kids and she kept reminding me of that while I was arguing with her. What are you doing making noise? My kids are trying to sleep. I apologize miss, but some asshole decided it was a good idea to park right in front of my driveway. Yeah, that's my car. The spot I normally park in was taken by one of the neighbors and that was the only place I could park. Now at first I actually felt sympathy for this woman. She had kids and everything and wasn't wrong about the car taking up her spot because one of my other neighbors had a party celebrating their niece's quinceanera and the neighborhood was packed with cars and she didn't have a driveway of her own. So she had to park somewhere on the street. So I decided to calm down and nicely ask her to move her car, but instead of accepting my generosity, she decides to keep arguing with me. I am not moving my car. It's late and I have to make sure my children get to bed. Keep in mind, it was only about 8.30 at the time. It wasn't late at all for her to move her car. I can't get my car out of here when you're parked in the driveway. I'm asking you again to please move your car. What could you possibly be doing this late at night that requires you to drive somewhere? Oh, I'm just headed to the convenience store to get- I don't care what you're getting. You can wait until tomorrow to get your trash. She was really Really getting on my nerves. I got ready to raise my voice, but then I had an idea. So I replied with, okay, and walked back inside my house. When I looked back, I saw that she had that, yeah, I totally showed him look on her face. I tried not to get pissed off at that as I reached for the phone and called the police. I explained the situation and a few minutes later, a tow truck arrives. The car was in fact illegally parked.
parked and so it was impounded. The next day, early in the morning, I get a knock on my door. Obviously, it's the mother. Her kids were standing next to her. She immediately starts yelling at me as soon as I open the door. Apparently, she was going to take her kids to an amusement park and now they didn't have a car, there's practically no way for them to go. As soon as she tells me that, I immediately chuckle, which pisses her off even more. Meanwhile, her kids are crying. Mommy, I really want to go. Me being the insensitive arsehole, I point at the kid and let out a big ha, which causes him to start screaming like a banshee. The mum starts yelling at me, saying how much of a monster I am. I just reply with, get a cab, slut and slam the door in her face. I may or may not have been a little too harsh, but that family of idiots got what they deserved. I completely agree. I love that OP got their revenge in this story. It's all well and good entitled parents being entitled, but the best stories are when they get destroyed. How dare you hold my son, you I just saved your son's life. When I was 16, I'm 20 now for context, I used to work at a very local hotel since I just dropped out of sixth form, the British version of a stage before college. I took on a lot of roles and it was extremely hard work, unsociable hours, god awful pay and harsh management. After working there for about a year, the general manager came up to me and offered me some hours down in our leisure area, which I graciously accepted as any simple minded desperate for money person would. This leisure centre was composed of a pool, small gym, jacuzzi, etc. Let me tell you, to work down there was no small task. It was hot for us Brits. 40 degree heat is kind of nasty, especially with a workload on your shoulders. Oh, for all you American viewers, 40 degree heat in Celsius is about 100 in Fahrenheit, I believe? Whilst on shift downstairs, you were in charge of maintaining the pool, cooking, cleaning, taking calls, providing show around for potential members, and stuff like that. We offered a range of memberships to best suit most people, ranging from families to pensioners living off their pensions. Now then, the fun part. It was a very hot day, so I'm talking sweat everywhere. I was going about my duties of mopping the floor by the jacuzzi when I make out a small kid looking through the window, face and hands pressed against the glass, which I had polished about 10 minutes prior. No biggie, we were all kids once, and notice he's with someone, so I stop what I'm doing and head to the reception desk to greet them. I was greeted by the full Monty Karen herself, needs no explanation, so I smiled, said hi, and asked how I could help. Can you let us in? Charlie wants to swim. That's fine, madam. Are you staying at the hotel? No. At the time, it made it sound like I was insulting her intelligence. Oh, okay. Are you a member? Of course not. Your prices are far too ridiculous. Now, I've dealt with a lot of trash whilst working here, so an attitude never really fazed me. I'm awfully sorry, madam, but the leisure facilities are for guests and members only. Are you effing serious? Do you know how far I've driven to be here? I'm meeting my friends upstairs in the lounge in literally 10 minutes. I clocked that earlier she said, can you let us in, which plays a key part as I put the pieces together towards the end. After a bit of back and forward and a lot of cursing in my direction, she finally left with the kid, vowing she'd have my job for this. Whatever, everyone says that, but they never follow through, I thought. So I carried on about my business, sweating, cleaning, cooking, looking after the regulars who knew me very well as the night slowly comes to a close. So by now, everyone is either getting changed to leave or have already left so the pool is silent along with everyone else. So I'm in the gym, wiping down the equipment, when I hear a random sploosh. So I turn around and head out to the poolside, where I see a fully clothed kid sinking to the bottom of the deep end whilst trying to get air. My instincts kick in and I'm in the water in seconds. I dive under, pull him up and check that he's all okay. He's crying of course, he didn't mean to do what he did, he just wanted to swim. Fun fact, he couldn't. All the commotion attracts the attention of the regulars still around, who give me a hand in calming the kid down when all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. I can hear from even the poolside. EM drinking hand, red faced and primed for action. Get your effing hands off of my kid, you continues to march over to me. I beg your pardon? EM attempts to straight up swing for me whilst I'm tending to her kid. Luckily, the regulars step in and keep her from trying to maul me. He just wanted to swim and you were gonna let him drown! Right, I explained to you quite clearly earlier that you couldn't, and there is even a policy on the wall which states that all children under 12 years must be supervised. That policy was the one saving grace I had during this. It's literally in a frame in the front desk, so it's clear for all. I start guiding this poor kid back to his mum before she attempts another swing, even almost tried to throw a glass at me. You touch my son again and my fiance will effing kill you. By this time, the duty manager in station at the time was downstairs and by my side. We'll call him Jack. Jack explained that she really had to leave. She was causing a public disruption to the flow of business and threatening staff never went down well. I'm not leaving until you sack that POS you call staff. Off. Well, you'll be here a long time, but if it'll help improve the situation, you can happily explain your behaviour to the police, who have been called during this period. Well, that was it. 
All wide-eyed and tipsy, she yanked Charlie away and stumbled off in a quick pace march to her fellow Karen troop who were waiting for her at the entrance, and they vanished super fast. Jack checked that I was okay and if I was good in closing up and everything, to which I replied yeah and continued closing. The regulars wished me well and brought me in a box of chocolates and a crate of beer the following evening. We had that sort of relationship where we all knew what each other liked. I handed in my notice a few months after that because the manager just wasn't good enough and crap like that was becoming all too common. But this story always crops up every now and again during story time. Moral of the story, don't work in the hotel industry. So by that logic, does EM think that OP shouldn't have jumped in to save her drowning kid? These entitled parents, man, I just don't get them. EM says she'll sue us for injuring her child during paintball after signing the agreement about it. Context. This story happened last weekend when I was at paintballing with my buddies. For those of you who don't know, it's an indoor-outdoor sport where you get to shoot each other with pressurised air guns that shoot paintballs. The balls are shot at such a high pressure it will cause at least some bruises at minimum. Because of this, some paintball parks have you sign an agreement about not being held responsible for these injuries. Story. So, you know how I said some paintball parks have you sign an agreement? Well, at the one I went to, if you're bringing children under 13 with you, or you want to have them play with other players, there is another agreement you have to sign. Keep this in mind. Because I'm rather careful with what I'm signing up for, I read all the details before signing it. Behind me, I see EM, dressed in a typical soccer mum style, along with her ES, who was around 8. After I rented out my gear, EM talked to the paintball park manager about having her entitled son join the game. PM was against this and said we weren't using low impact paintballs for kids and talked about details of the agreement, but she pretty much ignored all of his words and kept demanding that ES join the rest of the group. PM sighs and makes her sign both papers. EM didn't bother to read them, well why doesn't that surprise me? Next, the paintball park employee was giving everyone the safety briefing. Standard stuff. Don't shoot straight into the air, don't shoot guys who are eliminated, don't shoot anyone close range, have safeties and cover on outside the range, etc. While the rest of the people were listening carefully, ES wasn't paying attention and was pretending to be Rambo, waving the gun around and pretending to shoot people. The paintball park manager saw this and politely asked the kid to stop doing that, but EM shouted to stop, claiming how unfair it was for him to only yell at my angel. PM ignored her and just gave ES a warning. So before entering the range, PE separates people into two teams, with me, my buddies and one group of people into one team, and ES and another group of people on the other team. EM was sitting on the bench outside of the range, watching ES play while her eyes were glued to her cell phone. As we entered, ES started to act like he was hot stuff and bragged about how this will be like Fortnite and I will be number one and will be everyone. Both teams instantly cringed hard and gave him the stink eyes. Game starts and with the sound of the air horn, everyone starts shooting. It feels like a war zone with paintballs flying everywhere. Everyone from my team was trying to hit ES and no one from his team provided cover fire. I was bunkered down in one of the covers when I saw ES running out in the open, still acting like he was Rambo. Everyone on my team starts shooting at him and he gets eliminated. The kid starts crying and goes into the elimination corner. EM starts shouting how unfair it was for us to target her kid. The game ends with our team winning. Everyone gets out and ES ran over to EM while me and my buddies went to our bench, cleaning up and refilling our guns. Then EM approached us with ES. You guys are monsters! I'm sorry? All of you were clearly singling out my son! My friend says, well, he was out in the open and the game is called Elimination. But surely you could have gone easy on him. My other friend says, no one is obligated to do that. You will apologise to my son. No, it's paintball. You should have expected this. Look at his ruined clothes. Look at all the bruises. Lady, it's a paintball. What did you expect? Mummy, that guy has a nice looking gun. Can I have it? He points at my friend's gun. Now, my friend was a paintball maniac and had an insane poker theme custom gun. Sure, sweetheart, turns to my friend. You will give me that as a compensation. No, the gun cost me quite a bit for a custom design. I'm not giving it to you. Oh, I will just take it then. And she tries to go for the gun. My friend now stands up, revealing his intimidating six foot five height, which easily dwarfed the EM at just over five foot two. No, now please go away before we call someone to have you removed. PM came over to see what was going on. EM started her sob story about how we were targeting only her son. PM reminded her again about the agreement and that she ignored the fact that we weren't using low impact paintballs. EM screamed like a banshee and left, swearing how she was going to sue us, the guests, for harassing her and her son, 
and the park for dangerous operation. We just shrugged and enjoyed a few more rounds of Capture the Flag and King of the Hill. It's Monday now and we haven't heard anything from EM nor the Paintball Park. Well, something tells me that she's not going to be getting in touch. I can't believe the kid said, this will be like Fortnite. Oh, Ninja, what have you done? I let kid draw, mother wants to buy it and accuses me of stealing it. Sorry if the text looks confusing, read the story and you'll get it. So I've been a big listener slash reader of r slash entitled parents and have been watching most of Relator's videos. Well, thank you very much for that. I didn't expect something like this to actually happen to me. Also, sorry if some words are like bon apple tea since English isn't my native language. Let's start, shall we? I was on my way home from school and brought my tablet with me since the ride to and from school was very long. I was sketching a bit when a small kid, let's call him SK, came up to me and asked what I was doing. I showed him my sketch and SK asked if he could draw a bit. I, a bit idiotically, said okay and SK sat next to me with my tablet in his hand. I watched closely to make sure he wasn't breaking it and SK was actually pretty good at drawing. A bit of time passed and SK went back to his mother. I thought that I would have a nice story to tell but oh boy was I wrong. Five minutes pass and SK comes back with her mother. I, a big reader of r slash entitled parents, knew immediately that the situation would go out of hands. The conversation went something like this. Nice tablet you got there. Thank you. My son really likes your tablet. I know, I let him draw on it for a bit and he looked very entertained. Can you have it? I'll give you 50 euros. No, sorry, I've only had it for a few weeks and personalised it for myself. Also, this tablet is not worth 50 euros. How much do you want for it? Again, no, I'm not selling my new tablet. Now the SK then jumps in. Mom, I don't want to have his tablet. No, sweetie, I will get you that tablet. EM got closer to me and I started to panic. I slowly put my tablet into my bag, but EM was not having it. She smacked the tablet out of my hands and I tried to take it, but she was quicker and ran away with it. I chased her down to the other side of the train when H stepped in, also known as my hero. Mom, is that your tablet? Yes, he tried to steal it from me. H was looking at me and saw the confusion and the brokenness in my face. He started asking about the details of it. What OS is on it? I don't care what's on it, it's mine. I step in saying, Windows 10 Home 32 bit. H opened the cover and saw the Windows logo on the bottom of the tablet. He looked at me and from his facial expression, I knew he had a plan. Who made the tablet? If it's a Windows tablet, it's obviously made by Microsoft. No, you're wrong. The tablet was made by Blue Chip. Remove the case and look at the back. H did and there was a logo spelling Blue Chip, just as I said. But EM still said that the tablet was hers, even though she answered both questions incorrectly. Now she was shouting louder than before and my ears couldn't take it. Then I did something that I never thought I would ever do. Press the emergency stop button. The train driver stopped the train, came out and I explained what happened. And EM, including SK, got kicked out at the next stop. And that's about it. I have since then never seen those two again, although I kind of want to see SK again and draw on my tablet with him. And just to be clear, my tablet is fine. Thanks for reading what I had to say and have a great day. I need your goth girlfriend. So this happened the other day when I was on a date with my SO. To be honest, I'm surprised my SO didn't murder this mofo. So some quick background. One, I'm a living meme, a big titty goth GF. And yes, when that was a thing, a lot of guys did try and get with me. As if I was a prize to be won and it was awful for a while. My SO, for lack of better words, is a redneck. I mean, Carhartt jeans covered in paint, mud and oil. Rip sleeve flannel, you get the idea. We are a weird couple, but I love him more than anything. So we were having a small date night. Sometimes we do every week, so no matter how busy our week gets, we still have time for each other. Most of the time, we just go to fast food places because I'm cheap and it really doesn't matter where I am as long as I'm with him. So we were at a more fancy place than our normal spot. We chose a cute mum and pop shop. It was kind of busy, but we were able to get seated. As we were eating, I can see my SO mean mugging someone. I ask him what is going on. He didn't reply, just kept looking over in a different direction. I look over and see a guy who looks like he's trying super hard to look over at us. Babe, was he staring at us? My SO just nods. Okay, well, I need to use the bathroom. I will be back. I got up and went out of my way so I'm not in the guy's line of sight when I walk past. When I get back, I see that my SO's face is bright red with a look of I'm about to kill you as the guy who was staring at us was yelling at him. I couldn't hear, but the looks on the other customer's faces told me he wasn't being nice. When I walk up, ready to tear this guy a new one, I hear, I need a goth girlfriend. All my friends will be super jealous if I walk up with her on my arm. I mean, look at her tits. They gotta be a D at least. 
come on, man, you don't deserve her. My SO sees me and smiles. He knows the absolute trash storm I'm about to rain onto this poor guy. When the guy turns around, his face goes completely white. So, girls are just trophies for you to hang off your arm. That's how you see me. I'm just a big titty bimbo you can show off, then throw away when you are done. Is that how you treat women? How would your mother feel if she knew that her baby went out here looking at women like objects? I would feel completely ashamed if I was you. And for your info, jackass, I'm a double D and you would never be able to have them because my amazing SO already has claims on them. Look at me and him again and I won't be so nice. The guy was cowering in his seat as I yelled at him. No one stopped me, possibly because they thought this guy needed a verbal ass beating as well, or they were just scared. He got up, tail between his legs. We finished our meal without any other problems, and on the car ride home, my SO looked over at me and said, this is why I fell in love with you. You got a temper just as bad as mine. To any guys out there who want a big titty goth GF, don't be an ass, we are people too, not some trophy. EM demands ride on $10,000 quad bike, right after a crash. So for some background, when this story took place, I was about 13. I had recently moved to a farm which required a quad bike. I'd bought a $10,000 bike off Trade Me, which is the New Zealand equivalent of eBay, and had it delivered. I was also in the progress of meeting all our neighbours at the time, the majority of whom were pretty nice, except one more to follow in the story. So I was in the paddock feeding some animals when I hear my dog yelp. I turn my head to look at him, completely forgetting that I am driving at over 35 miles an hour near a line of trees. As the bike crashes, I jump off, just before it rolls, which likely would have killed me if I was still on it when it happened. The bike was severely damaged, the front was horribly warped, the handlebars were crooked, and the battery was ripped out. I start to fix the battery when EM runs over, closely followed by EK, who was dragging my dog by the collar. The following conversation ensues. EM. Excuse me, maybe please have a go on the motorbike? No, sorry, and can you please let go of my dog? They completely lost it. Who the F do you think you are telling my daughter what to do? Can't you see? She is literally choking him. EM shoves me out of the way and jumps on the quad bike. Thankfully, the key came out in the crash, so she couldn't have gone anywhere. At this point, I lost it. I have mild ADHD, so I'm surprised that I even made it this far. I wrenched my dog out of EK's grasp. Leave now or I'm calling the cops. EK apparently didn't like this and threw a punch, which hit me in the neck. I kind of overreacted by kicking her in the stomach before flipping her on the ground. I had done four years of karate and two years of judo at that point. EM runs at me, but I get out of the way and grab the keys to the motorbike. You can leave now or I will call the cops. They got up and ran home. In summary, it turns out that the mother was wanted for trespassing and animal abuse. We found out a year later when she was arrested for a different crime. I still haven't heard what the result of the court case was. EK ended up in foster care until the trial was over and I was punished by my parents for damaging the quad bike. How EP tried to steal my phone and got caught. Now, I honestly wish I was making this up. A while back, I was at a store looking for a Samsung tablet for my friend's birthday. My friend is nine, by the way, and he was spending time in the hospital because he had cancer. I was browsing for a bit when I felt a tug at my arm. What's that in your pocket? I check my pocket and to my surprise, it's my Samsung Galaxy S9. When I say to my surprise, I mean I don't remember putting it in my pocket. But then I remembered I was in a hurry and I must have autopilot put it in my pocket. So I put out my phone. Oh, this? It's my Samsung Galaxy S9 phone. Cool. Then he reaches to my phone. I back away a bit. Excuse me, what are you doing? Can I play with it, please? Now, at the time, the kid had a really cute smile, so it was hard to say no. Still, I clenched my teeth and said, No kid, sorry, I don't normally trust people with my phone. At this, EK starts whining. Please? Honestly, I couldn't stop myself. The kid was just too cute. Fine, you can use it for the time that I'm here. So I hand her my phone. Big mistake. I was browsing a bit more when I found the perfect tablet for my friend. So I was going to go to the kid and get my phone back when I see her walking out of the effing store. My phone in her hand. Luckily, I managed to catch up. Excuse me? The entitled mother says, Yes? That phone your daughter is holding is mine. Can I have it back? EK pulls a sad face. But you said I could have it. I said you could play with it for the time I was here. I didn't say you could keep it. EK pulls a sadder face, but reluctantly gave it my phone. The EM reacted negatively to this. Why can't my daughter have your phone? I was not expecting that. Because it's mine? So? You let her play with it. Why can't she have it? I said no. I must be going now. 
I start to walk away. Mom, I want a phone like his one. EM stops me in my tracks. Give me your phone. I was surprised at that. Excuse me? You heard me. Give me your phone now. The EM then tried to grab my phone out of my hands. I keep a tight grip on it. Mom, stop now. This phone was almost £500. Look, you little brat. My daughter has been getting very good grades recently. She deserves a nice phone and your phone is a perfect reward. You were looking at the phone section anyway. Why don't you just buy a flip phone? That should be suitable and cheap enough for your needs. Any dumb moron could see I was looking at the tablet section. I tried to explain that I was getting a tablet for my friend and that he was in the hospital. Well, your friend is a clumsy, stupid boy then. Buying him a tablet would just spoil him. He is too old for that kind of stuff anyway. Mom, he is nine. I don't care, goodbye. I didn't notice, but while we were talking, she took my phone. I froze on the spot. I've never been in this kind of situation before and thus I didn't know how to deal with it promptly. So I did the only thing I could do. I scream. Now, I understand this may not have been the smartest course of action, but like I said, I have never been in this kind of situation, so I hadn't the faintest freaking idea of what to do. Security came over and asked what was wrong. Now, I'm guessing the mum must have heard that the guard was alerted by my scream because she started walking faster to the exit. Security catches up with her, however. Excuse me, mom, but this young man claims that you stole his phone. Is this true? No, he's lying. I bought this phone for my daughter. Unlock it then. EM tries to unlock the phone, but to no avail. Wait, she actually tried to unlock the phone even though it wasn't hers. How stupid can you get? Security gives me the phone to unlock it and lo and behold, it works. Then security tries to arrest the woman for attempted theft. But before they could, she grabs my phone and freaking smashes it on the ground before trying to make a run for the exit with her little brat following behind. Security caught up with her, however, and arrested her. She got charged with attempted theft and resisting arrest. The store apologized to me by giving me a Samsung S10 and a Samsung tablet for free. So despite the events that occurred, I left the store happy. Well, well done to you. And Derm Nugget, thank you very much for this story. I really hope you're ready to read this. Well, I just did. EM accuses me of stealing in a store which does not even sell the stolen item. So this happened yesterday. I'm on vacation in Dresden with my grandma. We often go out together to go shopping, but now and then I go alone if I want to get something. The cast, me, me of course, EM entitled mother, EK entitled kid, and C, cashier at the grocery store. So I went out because I wanted to buy another Overwatch pop figure in GameStop. I had seen the figure the day before but was with grandma. The GameStop is in a large shopping centre with many different stores. Important to know is that the GameStop is the only store there that sells pop figures. I went in, took the figure off the shelf and headed to the cash register. There was no employee so I waited. In comes the EM and her EK. The EK runs over to the massive shelf filled with pop figures and starts looking through them. Meanwhile I pay for my figure and start heading out. The EK runs over and points at me. Mom, she has my figure! That's the one I wanted! EM comes over to me and holds out her hand. Give us the figure. No, I just paid for it. Also, this was the last one and I came first. The figure I bought was the normal size Symmetra Pop figure from the Overwatch collection. I had asked the employees if they had any other, but they said the figures on the shelves were all they had. EM tries to reach for the figure. Just give it to us. You don't need it anyways. Also, my son deserves it. He's been so good lately and deserves a gift. I don't care, lady. I paid for the figure with my own money. Now leave me alone. I walked past her and left the store. I heard the EK whining about wanting the figure, but I couldn't care less. I went to Aldi, which is a grocery store, to get something to drink. I had put the figure in my bag, which was partially open. I got a bottle of water and went to pay. Out of nowhere, EM runs up to the cash register. Stop her! She's trying to steal my son's toy! I wanted to get him that toy! She tries to grab the figure out of my bag again. What is your problem, lady? I push her away and take out the figure. But we don't even sell these figures here. I saw her take it. I wanted to buy it for my son and she stole it. She wasn't going to pay for it. I take out my ticket that show I paid. Also, I will gladly go back to the GameStop and show you more proof I paid for it. I have a store card in my name. Please leave the store now before I will call security. EM and EK leave and I didn't see them for the rest of the day. I paid for my drink and went on shopping. I somewhat wish the cashier would have checked my ticket. I'm not from Germany and I have a Belgian credit card, so on the ticket, the machine does print the text in Dutch. I would have loved to see the EM trying to talk her way out of that. 
See, I reckon what this OP should have done is offered to sell it to her for just an insanely high price, because this sort of person would probably have bought it. But then again, I guess she could have also been a choosing beggar and would have asked for it for free. So maybe that wasn't the best idea. EP inconvenienced by my cancer diagnosis. I'm currently a nanny for a family I've been with for about six months. They always pay me on time and I adore the little boy I'm taking care of. So we've never really had any problems until now. I recently found out that I have ovarian cancer and need to have one of my ovaries removed. My conversation telling EP about my surgery went something like this. EP, did I not tell you about our family reunion? You did, but unfortunately I won't be able to come and help because I'll have just had surgery. You'll need to reschedule then. I'm not going to do that. We've had this plan for months, you need to be there to help. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to be there. Are you kidding? No. I'm not sure how much I trust even my child with you if you don't care enough to be there for our family when we need you. I care about him a lot, and I hope I've shown that over the last few months working for you. EP huffed and stomped off. I'll update when they're talking to me again. Wow. So this EP is saying that instead of having potentially life-saving surgery, this person should come and work for them instead. Makes a lot of sense. EM tries taking my skateboard and my mate's BMX because her EK ran in front of us and we hit him. Yo Redditor and anyone else who's gonna read this. I've been reading the EP stories for a while and never came across one myself, but oh boy I did the other day. Context, I am a 13 year old living in Northern England, big up Bradford, but do not whatsoever fit the role of being a chav like the stereotypes of up here. Although it says in the title that my mate and I ride and stuff, we don't ride Carreras and don't carry knives. We just want to get good at what we do. I'm 13 but I also happen to be 5 foot 9 and I have a super deep voice. This comes in later. The juicy story. So this happened very recently. Recently we've had great weather up north, a rarity, and me and my friend have been going to the local skate park almost every day after school to practice what we love doing. The skate park isn't very big but it has a fantastic surface and a pretty good half pipe from dropping in etc. On this particular day we got there and both verbally groaned, midgets. They swarmed around on crappy razors and other design masterpieces from eBay, devouring the ramps and snaking people like vipers. Snaking is cutting in front of people when those people are about to drop in or whatever. We looked at each other and walked forwards with wary steps. I was putting my helmet on and was about to drop in when I noticed my trucks were a bit too loose, so I sat down and got my Allen keys. F said he was going to the shop, so I gave him a quid and asked for a Dr Pepper. I did some kick flips and nolly flops to get warmed up by the side of the park. I did a couple of circuits at the park, doing a few tricks at the half pipe and everything else. On my third circuit, a little kid, EK, ran onto the park and in front of me. I swerved out of the way but clipped his shins with my board. He seemed to be fine, if shaken, but I had gone straight off my board and had a huge graze on my left arm. I swore and stood back up, looking over to see if EK was alright. EM ran over to me and started yelling at me. The following conversation ensues. What the hell do you think you're doing, deliberately crashing into my baby like that? Ugh, your son literally ran in front of me when I was minding my own business, doing something that doesn't harm anyone if everyone is respectful and sensible. I was watching the entire entire time and you 100% definitely went into him on purpose. I pull out my phone. I don't have time for this mom. I just want to skate so sorry little guy, I said to EK. I didn't mean to hit you but for next time try not to run over the big track here cause it can get you hurt yeah? My son did nothing wrong, why are you verbally berating him when he was clearly in the right here? I'm already tired of this conversation. Okay I'm in the wrong, I apologise for hitting your son and hope we can just go our separate ways and forget about this entire ordeal. She seemed to accept this and walked off. My friend came back at that point and laughed his head off saying he'd been watching from a distance and that was the most hilarious thing he'd ever witnessed. I hit him and took my drink. We messed about for a couple of minutes then got on with it. I don't mean to brag but I can skate pretty well. I've been practicing a 720 gazelle flip and just doing basic lines on the half pipe and such. We were having a good time when the EM rocked up again, this time with the police officer. I continued skating just trying to ignore the EM. When I got back to my friend, the officer waved me over and I complied, trying not to seem wary of what he was going to say. This woman here tells me you have deliberately hit her child with your board and then tried to assault her. Could I hear your version of the story please? EM visually slouches and looks a heck of a lot grumpier than before. So basically, her kid ran in front of me and I swerved out of his way. I clipped him with my board and sent myself flying, grazing my arm. I show the officer my graze. 
Then this lady yells at me for assaulting her son and I try to keep the peace and give her kid some friendly advice or not running into a skate park. She then yells at me again for yelling at her kid at which point I've had enough and tell her that I was totally in the wrong and I hope she can forgive me. I yell for my friend. My mate here can confirm this as he was watching. He confirms this is true and another couple of guys chip in and say that EM is the liar here. The officer gives her a warning for wasting police time and then wanders over to the ice cream van. After EM's sure he's gone, on, she whispers into EK's ear and then wanders past me and towards my staff. EK then proceeds to run onto the park again. I grab him round the waist as there's a guy about to smack straight into him and pull him backwards. The EM has been watching this happen and then proceeds to yell. Pedo! This kitty fiddler just touched up my son! This man is touching my son! 20 year old pedo! The officer comes running and tackles me to the ground. I play rugby so it's no biggie that I just got slammed to the ground but still it was a shock. What the F you done female dog? Gotta keep it PG, thank you very much. I just saved your son from a broken arm and you're calling me a pedo? Plus the fact that I'm 13 makes you effing mentally clapped doesn't it? And for all you Americans clapped pretty much just means stupid. Everyone else in the park is looking at this lady like she's complete and utter div, another English word. The officer then yells at the lady for disrupting the peace again and says that this is her final warning. At this point she realises she's messed up big time, so Speed walks off with EK. Two minutes later, she was back, and whilst I was having a drink and watching my friend do stuff on the halfpipe, she took my £120 custom-built board and ran. I yelled what the heck she was doing and sprinted after her, full-on rugby tackling her to the floor and pinning her down. My friend sprinted over and took my board from her, whilst the officer sprinted over again and arrested her. Mom, you are hereby under arrest for attempted theft, disturbance of the peace, and some other things I can't remember, something like wasting an officer's time. I get up from pinning her down and dust myself off. You might think it stops here, but that's a no from me dog, the fun never ends. I'm shaken at this point. My friend walks over to me and shows me my board. One of my most prized possessions had been damaged. I was adjusting my trucks when she nicked the board so everything was loosened. One of the trucks had bent from being slammed against concrete. I showed the officer and he added something about property damage to her charges. Her entitled kid then walks over and shoves me, sending me to the floor as I'm unprepared and out of breath. The officer grabs his arm and holds him in place. I don't know the results of what the EM got charged with and I'm too lazy to give updates, but yeah, this was my run-in with a Karen slash EP. Well thank you very much Jos Bob for your submission to my sub Reddit, that entitled mum is something else. Give my angel your $300 Nintendo Switch, $200 AirPods, and your $3,000 laptop. So this story all begins with me buying my Switch and AirPods with my own money, which I'd indeed worked hard for. At the time where I lived, which is where this story would take place, we had these awfully nice neighbours from what it seemed, but this sure taught me that this was not true. So me and EM's son, who is two years younger than me, 11 at the time, were playing outside when I mentioned to him I want to go inside and play Super Smash on my Nintendo Switch, which he agreed to, and his mother came as well as she didn't want him to be alone. She watched us play and was eyeballing my AirPods and asked me what they were. Oh, those are my AirPods. They are wireless earbuds that I bought. Oh, that's cool. James? Not his real name. Come look at these. Whoa, those are cool. Can I try them? Um, sure, you can try them. Let me just go grab my phone so they will work. I went to go grab my phone when I hear them whispering, so I come back fast with my phone. Hey, I got my phone, we can try them now. Okay, James, try them on. EK had put them in his ears and began to walk around while I played music. He then looks at EM and nods his head, to which EM nods her head back. He obviously fakes stubbing his toe and then falling and hurting his back and begins crying. Mom, I hurt my arm, I think it's broken. Oh my God, my baby, are you okay? She then says to me, Oh my God, you devil, you tried to hurt my baby with those dangerous pod airs. I laughed in my head at that. That could have killed my angel. Ow, mommy, it hurts. What do my AirPods have to do with your son falling? I then try to be reasonable and walk over to her son to try to help him get up, even though I knew he faked it. I grabbed his hand to help him up and he shook his head back crying. Crying. Ow, mummy, he punched me in the face. I think my jaw is broken. Oh my god, I'm calling the cops on you. At this point, I'm honestly confused on what's going on and beg to the mum. No, don't call the cops, please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. At this point, I'm beginning to break down a bit as I have anxiety and the EM for some reason begins to freak out with terrible acting skills. 
I cannot believe you ha, ha, have done this. You know what? You owe us. Yeah, you owe me. I'll pick out what I want. Okay, baby, what do you want? He points at my Switch, my AirPods, and my $3,000 laptop and says, all of that. What the heck? No way I'm giving you almost $4,000 worth of my stuff. Well, you should not have made him trip and punch him in the face. At this point, I call the cops and they told me to wait while they had people come. Good, call the cops and then they can arrest you. Yeah, it was a bad idea for me to call them. I might leave because I'm scared about getting arrested. You can't leave. Watch me. I walked out the front door as I'd already noticed the cop car putting up. The cops entered the house and began talking to the woman. She pleaded. That young boy tripped and punched my son in the face. The cop looked at the boy and noticed there was nothing wrong with him. Police officer. Are you sure, ma'am? Your son looks all right. Are you doubting me? I showed them the security camera footage and then the EM went ballistic and pushed me down on the ground in front of the cops and yelled, You lying SOB, you should go burn in heck. You wonder why you don't have any friends? Because you're an F. The cops then pushed her to the ground and handcuffed her. Her son grabbed my laptop and threw it to the ground, smashing it. What the F? That's what you get for hurting my mummy and me. The cops grabbed the boy and put him in handcuffs and they got 50 hours of community service and a $2,000 fine. With addition to having to pay for my laptop, they broke. I haven't seen them since. My son is sick, so he will be in front. My boyfriend and I were damn excited to watch Endgame at the cinema. He loves Marvel and all the movies. Oh, by the way, I've pre-checked this story. There are no spoilers, don't worry. We pre-booked our seats for us to be at the very back so we can get the full view of the screen. We enter the building and go to reception to get our tickets. We're standing in line as a mother with a small child starts shouting at staff and taking up a ridiculously long time. Here's the cast. EM, ES, BF, ME, all standard stuff, and S is staff, P is person. EM. My son is ill and we did not have time to bring back our seats, so we deserve to get our front row seats. Sorry miss, we can't do that. We can arrange My a- My son wants a front row seat so he can get a better view. Is it okay if you and your son get the second front row seats? Fine, but you owe me money. No, we don't. Here's your ticket. Finally, it's our turn. We tell them that we pre-booked our seats and we get our tickets. We see the mother dragging her crying son to the bathroom and I roll my eyes. My BF says, what's up with her? She's crazy. I hope we don't watch the same movie. Me too. My boyfriend and I get a couple of snacks, drinks and popcorn for the movie and it's almost time to get into the movie theatre. We get there, show the security guard our tickets that he scans and we get into the theatre. It's dark and cold and I came with a t-shirt. I see Karen at the front of the movie theater talking with someone. Oh no, not today. I walk to the front row seats. I demand this seat. I've booked it and you have no right to steal me and my son's seat. Then the person who was sitting in the seat says, uh, I booked this front row seat. No, you didn't. Show me your ticket. I won't if I don't want to. So I say, just get in your seat. The movie's gonna start soon. It's just a seat. It's just a seat? My son and I demand a front row seat and he needs it because he's ill. Why are you bringing a sick child to the cinema anyway? Your son can spread it. It's healthy to go outside when you're sick. You need oxygen to fight off the flu. I am dumbfounded. As am I. <laughs> if your son has the flu, go to the doctors and arrange an appointment to get a flu jab. Vaccines cause harm. Jesus said that it's better to have it natural. I've just encountered an anti mother. I can taste bile in my mouth. At this point, I've had enough and I storm off to my seat. My boyfriend asks me if I'm okay and I say yes. He tells me that he will report her to the security guard if she disturbs the whole cinema again. Endgame has started and we're having a great time. Still, no spoilers. My boyfriend is super hyped and I've already finished my first bucket of popcorn. All of a sudden, a child starts crying and it makes my ears bleed. No, not literally. My boyfriend says, do you think it's her son? Maybe. I stand up for a second and I see the son in Karen's lap, moving around and bawling his eyes out. He seemed seven earlier, but now he looks about two. I sit down and say, yup. This carries on for another 10 minutes or so. I can't hear anything over this demonic child shrieking. I need to go to the bathroom, so I stand up from my chair and tell my boyfriend I'll be right back. I walk out of the movie theater and I'm absolutely happy that I'm not listening to Satan's call anymore. I get back from the bathroom and I'm shocked to hear her son crying even louder than before. The worst thing is, Karen isn't doing a single thing. I back out of the movie theater for a moment and I notify a security guard about a child screaming in the movie. I'm pretty sure they can get kicked out like this. 
We both walk in the movie theatre again and point at Karen. I say it's the sun on that blonde head woman's lap. I sit down again. My boyfriend asks, did you tell security? Yes, I've had enough. I see the guard and Karen speaking to each other and he escorts Karen and the demon out of the building. I can hear the actual movie now and not be annoyed. Thank the Lord. The movie ends and it was great. It is around 4pm now, so we try to get out of the cinema as quickly as possible to avoid traffic. My boyfriend and I rush out of the movie theatre and we get to the escalator. Good. My legs are sore from sitting for too long, but someone caught my eye. A blonde haired woman holding hands with a child. Freaking Karen. If you look closely enough, you can see smoke coming out of my nostrils and ears. I can see the anti-vax mother. Let's try and avoid them, okay? Okay. We had difficulty doing that as the lobby was pretty small, but we got out before we suffered any longer. I hear police sirens. Oh, snap. The car stopped and entered the building. I don't want to know what happened. And that's the end of the story for now. Hope you liked it. My son is a better artist than you, therefore he deserves your sketchbook. For some background, during the summer between my 8th and 9th grade school years, I signed up for an architecture program in Boston, being hosted by a college dedicated to art and design. I won't say which one for privacy reasons. The program was five weeks long and consisted of the students going around the city looking for inspiration and learning about different styles, methods and types of architecture. I ended up learning a lot from that program and it helped me during my sophomore year of high school since I took an architectural design class, but that's a different story. This program was somewhat unique because most of the time we were out in the city sketching and drawing things on sketchbooks given to us by the program and I loved that sketchbook. I would doodle everything in there, whether it be fan art, landscape, character designs, basically anything that crossed my mind. Anyways, one day during the third week of the program, they decided it would be a good idea to take my group to the Boston Public Garden, because that place is absolutely gorgeous and full of things to sketch. Anyways, on to the story. So, my group arrived at the garden at around noon, and my leaders came up with a challenge. They told me and the other five kids in the group that we would have an hour to draw the best sketch of the garden, and whoever won would get a gift card to Dunkin' Donuts. Everyone wanted that free gift card, so we all split up and went to different areas to capture the best part of the park. I ended up picking a gorgeous spot under a weeping willow tree right next to the pond where the swan boats would pass by. Perfect. It was my golden ticket to a free gift card and I didn't want to miss out, so I began to draw. I was about a half hour in and I had most of the pond done and was moving on to some of the landscape in the back when I hear a snicker from above me. I look up to find this 12 year old kid staring down at me smiling, which startled me at first but then I realised he must be seeing what I'm doing, nothing wrong with that. That's the best you can draw? Please, I can draw art like that within three minutes. I keep a straight face and as kindly as I can, tell him, Oh, well, that's awesome you can draw like this. It's always nice to meet more artists. You can watch over me if you'd like to. No, I've got bigger things to do than watch someone struggle with something so simple. And left. I was a bit confused and frustrated since I was just talked down to by a 12 year old, but I just brushed it off seeing as I had more important things to do. About 20 minutes later, and I begin to add some details like birds flying and some textures, when in the corner of my eye, I see not just EK coming up to me again, but this other woman as well. She had long curly blonde hair, a tank top, jeans, skinny, and this really annoyed look on her face. Uh oh, she came up to me putting on this fake smile while looking down at me and this is how the convo went. Hi there young man, my son just told me he saw you doing some really good art. Oh why thank you. EK here is a really good artist, top of his class and is doing some art online. You could learn a lot from him. That's cool, it's nice to meet other people who are also interested in art. I'm still learning some techniques to improve my work and I'm always open to suggestions and tips from others. Yes, well EK also told me that he really likes your sketchbook and the drawings in them. Oh well, I'm glad he does. Yes, so can he have it? What? My kid's been looking for a new sketchbook and he can't seem to find the right one for him. But he said yours is perfect, so can he please have it? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't give away this sketchbook since it has all of my drawings in it. If you want, I can see if I can find it for you online. No, he told me it has to be your sketchbook, nothing else. So can you please give it to him? It would mean a lot. I'm sorry, but no. Like I said, this has all of my drawings in it and I can't give them away like that. You're just selfish. You should always give away things 
to those who are less fortunate than you. So stop being a brat and give it to him. No, I told you once and I won't tell you again. This has all of my drawings in it and I'd be happy to direct you to where you can buy a sketchbook just like this one. Mom, why don't you have it yet? Don't worry, honey. Mummy's getting it for you. See what you did? Now stop being so difficult and just give it to him. She snatched the sketchbook from my hands, gave it to EK, then walked away. I was dumbfounded and took a few seconds to process what the freak just happened. And when I came back to reality, I began to chase her down. And just as I did, someone stood in front of Karen and EK. Get out of my way, I need to get home right now. The nice man said, okay, I'll move when you give that book back to that young gentleman over there, pointing at me. It's not his. He stole it from EK, so I just took it back from him. Now move. I know that's a lie. I've been having a picnic with my family for an hour and we've seen him sitting under that tree with that book all that time. Then you came along and snatched it from him. Care to explain why? Karen was now stumbling upon her words. He, he, he took it before he came to the tree. It's still EK's and I'm not giving it back to that thief. The nice man then snatches the book from EK. Then why are all the images signed danger instead of EK? Karen's face went white. She stood there looking at him for a few moments, then walked away cursing at him and telling me my drawing sucked anyways. Of course she did. How nice. The nice man thankfully gave my sketchbook back and I thanked him graciously. Can you, can you imagine if he'd just run off with it instead? <laughs> I flipped through the pages to find that EK had completely defaced my sketches, scribbling out everything with a black pen, to the point where the drawing was just a bunch of black lines. He even drew on the back page of the book, which looked like a dog drawn by a three month old. I couldn't tell because it was so bad. Take that EK. Thankfully, EK had not gotten to my garden drawing and I was so happy because I actually still had a chance of winning that card. The nice man looked over my garden drawing and told me that it was incredibly good and I should be proud. It was really nice to hear that after a grown woman and young boy completely destroyed and ridiculed my work. I thanked him over and over before leaving to the entrance of the park and the nice man told me he'd warned the park patrol about them. I didn't end up winning the gift card. Some other kid who drew like a god drew an amazing picture on top of the bridge overlooking the pond. Mostly because I didn't get any time to finish the details, but my counsellors still said it was really good. I also told them about what happened with Karen and EK, and we also told the park patrol about what happened. Not sure about what happened to them, but I really don't care, and just hope that they were punished in some way or another. Buy your own freaking Wi-Fi. So I live in an apartment complex and some people buy their own Wi-Fi, like me, because the apartment Wi-Fi is really slow, especially with so many people using it. There are a lot of people on my floor because it's the top floor, so I don't know everyone. What I do know is that there is a really loud family in the room next to mine that has gotten several noise complaints, one from me, that they just ignored because I guess they just don't give a poop and the rules don't apply to them apparently. So one night after a long day of work and walking through the rain one Tuesday night, I decided to watch TV to relax and the room next to me, the loud family, became louder and louder. But this time I heard a thud, crying, a door opening, footsteps and banging on my door. The story is about to get juicy. So after all the noises and the banging at my door, I, like most people would, decided to get up and see what all the fuss was about. I open the door and see a 5 foot 9 dark haired woman standing in the hallway and the following conversation begins. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, what brings you here? I look at my watch at 6.30. So, long story short, my Wi-Fi, the apartment one, is running super slow and my son's games won't work. So, I was wondering if I would use your Wi-Fi for just one day? Now, I was being nice because it was just one day. Sure, but just for one day, right? Of course. So, I whisper her the password so no one will hear. Okay, thanks again. Glad to help. The next day, my connection was garbage. It was running so slow, loading one page took at least five minutes. I gave her one more day because I'm assuming they went to sleep after 20 minutes because it was 6.30. The day after that, I finally changed the password and I heard the same series of noises. A thud, crying, a door opening, footsteps and banging on my door. I opened the door and there she was again. I'm guessing she wasn't happy because she had that let me speak to your manager look that most Karens have. The following conversation began. 
So, you changed your password? Yeah, you said one day, and that one day was the worst because my connection was horrible. Well, I was wondering if I could use it just one more time. I'm sorry, I need to have my Wi-Fi because I like to enjoy what I pay for. Well, I kind of have a kid, so I need to keep him occupied or else I have to deal with him watching the TV instead of me watching TV, and I need my TV. Well, if you want, I could recommend a good website to purchase your own fast and good Wi-Fi. I'm not interested. I need your Wi-Fi because I don't want to pay for this bull poop. Well, I can't buy Wi-Fi only to not use it, and I don't think the yelling in language is necessary. Just give me the Wi-Fi. I need it now. Mrs. I need you to leave now because I'm becoming kind of annoyed by this yelling. I'm not giving you the Wi-Fi and that's final. You selfish bum. Wi-Fi can be shared. The apartment does it. But that's an apartment complex, not a personal Wi-Fi that has been paid for by one person and not a massive company. Freak you. I never saw her again because I guess she hated me for life. I look back on it and sometimes wonder if I should have given her the Wi-Fi for one more day. But I think it might have ended up happening every day. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it would have done. You made the right decision. I also later learned that the thud was the entitled kid slamming his tablet on the ground after the loading took too long. The crying was also him. All the other sounds, you know what they are. I hope you enjoyed this story about someone wanting to steal my paid for Wi-Fi because actually living in it wasn't very fun. Enjoy your day. EP's racist remarks to a bunch of kids backfires remarkably. My dealings as a police officer with EP's issue too. So this is my third post, second while I was on duty. This story was my first encounter with an EP. I actually don't know if this counts. This time around, the entitled parent was a guy, and even though his kid wasn't around, I knew he had a kid from the conversation we had. What is about to take place happens quite often, unfortunately, and as a result is the reason for many unnecessary phone calls to the police force. As a friend has told me who works the emergency phone lines, those guys are unsung heroes. The cast for today, EP entitled parent who was a dad, K1, Kid1, K2, Kid2, in total there are about 9 kids that all interacted, but it was all pretty much set the same, so I will say KG is Kid Gang and me is me. Anyway, I was 2 hours into my shift and those first 2 hours were spent in the office, gathering what we know about the case. Me being a little wet behind the ears, I was assigned family liaison. Not saying this job doesn't go to the more seasoned officers, it's just more than likely to go to the new guys. It can really give you the insight and empathy that is needed to do this job. So I don't actually drive. I'm learning but I don't drive yet. So when I get assigned places, I usually take the tube or if I'm lucky I get dropped off by an officer who was just coming off duty. That day was my lucky day. An officer was coming off duty and dropping something off at another custody station so it was me and another officer in a squad car going to where I needed to be. Funnily enough, where I needed to be wasn't a million miles away from where I actually lived two roads, or blocks, away actually. I get out of the car, look at the address where to be, tap the top of the car as a goodbye, and off my colleague went. I get ready to start walking when I'm confronted by a large, 6 foot, 140 kilogram, oldish, late 50s man. About bloody time! I called you guys 20 minutes ago! I'm looking a tad confused because to my knowledge I was meeting a young woman and I was early. Sorry sir, I think you've got the wrong person. I'm here- What? You are the police, right? Just as a side note, one of my biggest pet peeves is people interrupting. It used to happen all too often when I first started this job. Well, yeah I am, but I'm actually in the middle of something right now, so I can't- You see those lads over there? He points at a group of teenagers that were doing what teenagers do, standing around and having a laugh with one another. They are predominantly black, with one white kid and one Asian kid, and they were all pretty much dressed in black too, and they were playing music. But it wasn't loud enough to cause an issue, not in my opinion anyway. They were also not in the way of anyone. They were in a park. Yeah. I want them gone. Who knows what they're up to? I don't want me or my kids to get stabbed by them. They have knives? Probably. Oh, so you don't actually know, you're just assuming that the- Well, they probably do. You know what I like. Go over there and move them along. I was taken aback by his blatant racism straight to my face about a group of kids that were doing no harm. For the sheer fact I was early for my meeting, I decided to humour him and go speak to the kids. Not to move them along, just to see what was what. As I walked over, EP followed me over, despite me telling him to stay put. Last thing I want is this guy barking orders from behind. Hey up, Zero Tools and Era, how's it going? I knew these kids, matter of fact. 
Three of them lived in the same building as me and I made a point to talk to them anytime I saw them. The police currently have a real tough time in dealing with the U's as my department call them. You guys should see the training that is put in place in order to help the old guard deal with them. It's laughable. Hey Zero, my mum wanted to thank you for the other day, for getting her shopping the other day. You're welcome. I said hey Zero. Oh my god, are you serious, Siri? She wants to cook you tea one night. No worries about that, I'll speak to her sometime soon. You lads having a decent time? Not doing anything illegal, are you? Nah, bro. We're just waiting for my friend's parents to come home so we can go to footy. The kids then started all talking among themselves as I turned to speak to a now open jaw man. I'm not sure what he was expecting me to do, especially since being ridiculously racist. I sure hope he wasn't thinking I'd join in with his thoughts. He quickly composed himself and attained a very angry face. Right, you bunch of little ladies, you better freak off out of this area or this guy will call his colleagues and get you all arrested. The kids all stop and stare at this guy in disbelief. No, I won't, they're not doing anything wrong. What? You have to oblige to my request and move them along. You do serve the public, don't you? Please don't shout in my face. I do serve the public, yeah, but they are doing nothing illegal. Search them, they will have drugs or knives. Now, with that said, the kids started to get a little agitated with this guy, rightly so. But the last thing I needed was a load of kids about to kick off with this guy. It would be a shame to arrest these kids for beating him up. I turn to the kids and point this out to K1. Please control your emotions and your friends. You've got nothing to worry about, just let me deal with this. The kid turns and nods to his mates who are all cussing this guy out for being old and racist. Come on lads, let's go to the shop. Let Zero deal with it. With that said, he stopped and focused his attention on me. His angry look didn't drop. I knew I was in for some interesting insults. Heard it all before though. We as a force are quite hated by a lot of people. Usually people who do naughty things or card carrying EDL members. Apparently we single these guys out. EP raises his hands and points straight in my face. The unit should be for them. You didn't search them. They could have had anything you useless lady. Sir, if you carry on insulting me, I will have to place you under arrest for disturbing the peace and drunk and disorderly conduct. It was daytime, but you could smell the booze from a mile away. After I said this, he got right into my face and said, You wouldn't freaking dare. You arrest me and I'll have your job. I stand there with a little smirk and raise my arm to his side as an indication for him to step aside. Now, looking back, I get it. All he saw was me raise my arm. He must have assumed that I was going to grapple him or something. Before my arm was even halfway through its journey, he pushed me. Hard. I didn't expect it. I was a little shocked that this guy had done this. I regained my composure as he was walking away from me, calling me a for falling over. I ran behind him, grabbed both of his shoulders, span around and used his weight and my own to slam him onto the ground with me kneeling with one knee on top of his back, using one arm to pin both his arms behind his back. My other hand was free to call for a unit to pick him up. As he was pinned to the ground, he was screaming all heck. He's gonna get me sacked, police brutality, broke his arm, which I didn't by the way. He has epilepsy, no he doesn't. He pays my wages to find out later he's unemployed and had been for a decade. He was screaming all the things every drunk, middle-aged bloke says when they face arrest. It took 10 minutes for a unit to show up and arrest him, meaning I was a little late to my meeting and also a little scruffy from the scuffle. But after explaining, she laughed, I laughed and I had a brew. All in a day's work. You know what, I don't think we've actually met a drunk entitled parent before, but this officer handled him extremely well, so kudos to OP. I don't care if the dragon is broken, turn it back on. I came all the way from Calgary for this. Okay, some backstory about this dragon. In West Edmonton Mall, around the 80s, they built this dragon that spits real fire. You read that right, real fire. So this has been a tourist spot for years on end. People from all over different provinces come to see it. Okay, fast forward to 2006. Unfortunately, the dragon kept breaking down, so the theater would get it fixed. But again, it would break down and it would cost so much just to fix it. When it did work, it would be so annoying, since every 20 minutes the effer would turn on and spurt fire and have these sounds come out. At first it was cool, but working underneath it, man it would get annoying real quick. So they stopped fixing it. People would come, complain, and the cycle continues. In come our cast, me. I want fire dad, guy. We drove all the way here, Karen. Annoying kid, kid, and my soup, TL. So I'm on floor sweeping the lobby minding my own business when somebody taps me on the shoulder. I turn around and see a family of three who are not happy. Hey, when does the dragon go off? It doesn't, it's broken. Since when? Three years now. Stop lying, go up there and push the button and start the dragon. Yes, yeah, start the dragon, I want fire. Yes, give my kid fire. 
I can't, mom. And why not? There is no button. I really have to stop being a smart guy sometimes. Oh, ha ha, funny guy. Go turn it on. Again, sir, I can't. Yes, you can. No, I really can't. The dragon has been broken for three years. It takes millions to fix it and it keeps breaking down. I don't care. We drove all the way from Calgary for this. Let me speak to your manager. I radio my manager. My soup comes walking towards us. What can I help you with? Yeah, you can turn on the dragon for my kid. Sir, the dragon's been broken for three years. We can't. How dare you? My kid was looking forward to this. We drove from Calgary, for goodness sakes. Just turn on the darn button. There is no button. Frankly, I don't know how it works. I'm not the one who created that thing. Isn't it on a timer? Yeah, it was. Then go to the timer and figure it out. Um, sir, the timer broke three years ago. Can I continue sweeping? Yes, go. Oh no, he stays right here. I want your name and his name. I'm calling corporate. We will be reimbursed for this since we came all the way from Calgary. You can call them, but they can't do anything. Oh, they can touch the button on their side. Yeah, their side. Here's the number. The parents get the number and then go off to call corporate. Who knows how much corporate laughed that day. Random lady demanded I let her in my house, took my phone, and lied to police. Okay, so first, some backstory. I live in a pretty middle-class neighborhood, the place you would expect a golf course next to, full of civics. Not exactly rich, but sometimes it seems like it. My house is one of the first ones you see when you come into the neighborhood. It's a pretty nice brick house. I always liked the fact that it was right at the entrance, but this day, I did not. So I was sitting on my couch playing Minecraft on my Xbox 360, still a good game, when someone knocked on my door. I have a doorbell. I thought it would just be some delivery since my parents order things online a lot. I opened it and said hi. Next thing I knew, some pregnant lady pushed me out of her way and went into my house. I was extremely confused and told her to leave. Notice, I am a scrawny 15 year old and my parents were gone. This was the following conversation. Who are you and why are you here? The entitled parent enters the house. I need to use the restroom. I've never experienced anything like this, so I say, uh, can you please leave my house? No, where is your restroom? I'm not telling you, please leave. I won't leave until you tell me. Mom, this isn't a gas station, leave before I call the police. No, the police can't do anything. I'm your elder and you have to respect me. Mom, I really don't. I wish I hadn't said that because that made her very mad. Yes, you do. If my daughter does, so do you. I realized her daughter is at my front door, obviously embarrassed. She looks about four or five. Mom, I'm not your son. You legally can't do anything to me. I'm going to call the police if you don't leave now. Do it then. I then pull out my phone and dial 911. This is when the daughter says she likes my phone. I thank her and proceed to call the police when the EP snatches my phone and gives it to the kid. There you go, enjoy your new phone. Give me my phone back now. No, that is your punishment for being so disrespectful. I then remember the landline in the kitchen. Would you like a drink? If you tell me where the bathroom is. Okay, I will go get one. I walk to the kitchen and call the police with the landline. I walk back to the EP and say we are out of soda, but the restroom is upstairs to the left. It really isn't, but I was hoping she would look for it while I was waiting for the police. She did look for it, but for about a minute. Now, I want to mention where I live again. Since most of the people in my city live in this neighborhood, a cop going 70 miles an hour will arrive at my house in about one to three minutes. Thankfully, they came fast. When EP came downstairs, the police were entering my neighborhood. They enter my house and tell me, EP, and her daughter to put our hands up. They pull us out one at a time to question us. I don't know what EP said, but I heard things along the lines of, he should respect me, he's my son, and it's my house anyways. When the daughter was asked about the phone, her mum told her to say it was her phone. My parents got home during her questioning. They gave the police the papers saying I was their son and the house was theirs. They also showed our phone bill saying, it was my phone. Last I saw was EP being arrested and the police calling someone, probably the girl's parents. I don't know what will happen, but it was a pretty crazy event. Karen kicks little girl in the face. So I got my first retail job when I was 13 and now I'm 23. So I have a lot of entitled parent stories, but this is one of the worst ones. 
So I was working at a hotel from when I was 15 till I was 18 and I loved the job there. I was in charge of the disco for the kids staying at the hotel. So lots of dancing with kids aged 2 to 11, face painting and walking inside a big mascot costume. The mascot was incredibly cute but the costume was giant and it was impossible to see anything inside and you weren't allowed to talk. Everything that was under a meter in height was out of my sight range in the costume so whenever we were going around in one someone had to follow us for several reasons. The person walking around with us basically had to be our voice and eyes because we could walk into stuff. And kids, oops. The children could ask us questions and last and most important, someone had to deal with the entitled parents in the hotel. And I promise you there was no shortage of those. Now a lot of the entitled parents never understood that the other kids, and not just their own, wanted to give hugs to the mascot. So we had parents pushing kids out of the way, yelling at kids to let their kids kids go first and even lifting their kids over the crowd so they didn't have to wait. We could have 200 kids at the same time in the restaurant sometimes so yeah it could be difficult if people didn't respect each other. And as we all know following this reddit not everybody does. Now enter the entitled parent. A real can I speak to the manager Karen, that is one of my favourite types of Karen. She and her family came to the hotel fairly often and she would always do something stupid and act entitled. The year before, she chased a bunch of kids out of the bouncy house so her kids could have it all to themselves, so we knew to watch out for her. This day, there was a conference and a holiday, so the restaurant was packed and the mascot could in no way get through there. So we made a line for the kids who wanted hugs. And a line? EP was having none of that for her precious little angels. I was saying hello to a kid in a wheelchair, so that took some time, and EP went straight to the kid and parent who were first in line. I was in the mascot costume, but I could hear Karen's nasal voice. Hello? My family and I are in the middle of dinner, and we want to say hello to mascot as quickly as possible, so we have to go in front of you. The little girl's dad said clearly, we are in the middle of dinner too, and we were here first. Sorry, but your kids have to wait in line like everyone else. That won't do. Come here, EK, and say hello to the nice mascot. She was also trying to get past the kid in the wheelchair now. The dad said, you are not allowed to just go past everyone else. Be an example to your kid and learn some manners. Ouch. I knew EP enough to know this would be a situation, and I squeezed my companion's arm and she stepped in. Sorry, but you have to go to the back of the line. Everyone here needs to do that. Karen got angry real fast. You do not talk to me like that, you. Let's say she called her a female dog for the younger readers. She kept arguing with my companion and some other parents and getting increasingly more loud. The manager, of course, heard her and ran over. You need to get out of the restaurant now. And Karen of course refused and the manager strictly but firmly took a hold of her arm and said Please come out with me for a while. Karen started screaming at her too and a waiter came and took her other arm and they were ready to take her out of the restaurant and away from the kiddos. When the manager and the waiter started to move, Karen went crazy and started kicking and actually kicked the young girl in the face. The dad of the young girl was quite a big fella so of course he almost attacked Karen but took care of his daughter first and foremost, thank god. She had a broken nose. The young girl's mum came over and took care of the young girl and the dad went after the manager, waiter and Karen from heck. The police were of course called and charges were pressed against Karen. She was also thrown out of the hotel with her family. I don't feel bad for her husband because he was an idiot too but I felt bad for the kids. The four year old girl who was kicked in the face still had a small scar on her nose the last time she came to the hotels. But thank god nothing more and she didn't seem to be too scared to be there. I always took a little extra good care of her after that episode. Unfortunately I don't know what happened to Karen after that with the police and all but I never saw her again and thank god for that. Move your car. So I live in an old southern town with a perpetually crowded central square. Made more crowded because it is the county seat and the county court complex is a across the street on one side, along with all of the city and county government buildings stretching for a few blocks in that direction. It's also been there for over a century and its layout was meant for horses, not cars. It's cramped. So one day off, I'm running errands and hit up the best local taco shop. This place has no AC outside of the kitchen 
kitchen and the inside is always in the upper 80s or hotter on a winter day. And the signage outside even points out you come for the food and not the parking. The parking being nearly non-existent, I drive to the square to park and eat between errands. After five or more laps on the one-way streets around the square, I luck out and see someone pulling out of one of the angled inside spots. These spots are all at an angle, so you can quickly pull into one and quickly back out if traffic lets you. That will be important later. Given that a heat wave had just started, I decide to eat in my car with the air running. I pretty much inhale the first taco. Bliss. Fine cut beef, cilantro, pico, etc. That's when I hear the horns. Some dingbat is behind me, flashing her lights, clearly thinking I'm about to pull out. And that's when it hits me through my food bliss. I'm nearly at a 90 degree angle to the road. It's about then she gets out of her car and starts screaming like a stuck up pig. Give him my spot, you. Well, yeah, I served in the army where you learn to say freak 10 times in a 12 word sentence, but even she was overdoing it with the expletives. Amused, I took a sip of whatever kind of Coke I was drinking, Dr. Pepper, I believe, and pull out another taco. The horns were getting far louder and multiplying. The lunch rush of both city and government workers was hitting and traffic sucks here and she's brought it to a standstill. The intersection is a parking lot and the backup is going to get long fast. At this point, she waddles up beside the driver's door and starts shrieking, move, I need to get my child ice cream. The ice cream shop on the square was good, but not that good, still darn good. Finishing a taco, I take another sip of coke and crack my window. Lady, you're directly behind me, I can't move. Neither can two lanes of traffic. Just to be clear, yes, she was pulled across not one, but two lanes of lunch hour traffic, pulled directly behind a parked car and yelling at the driver to move. This is where she loses it. Move your god darn car, I want ice cream and need to park. Nice flex lady, forget your kid that fast. Oh yeah, she said I want ice cream, not her kid. I roll my window back up. She then starts shrieking, move, I need to park, move, I need to park, move, I need to park. By this point, she's attracted a lot of attention. I can see a kid in her car's front passenger seat, quietly reading a book. No doubt used to mummy's temperament, paying the events no mind. She also has at this point attracted the attention of a group of teens, school having just ended, and they pick up her chant, sort of. Her chant is time like clockwork. Move, I need to park. Move, I need to park. After a minute of this, the teens join in. Whenever she says move, they start saying moo like a cow, which is so unfair to cows. It's a few more repetitions until she realizes they're mocking her, not agreeing with her, and she charges them like they're an all-you-can-eat buffet. But she only makes it a few steps before reality once again disappoints her, as by this point, multiple county sheriff deputies and city cops have flooded out of the courthouse across the street to see what in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here. So they say something in a loud commanding voice that I can't make out and her charge stops. Officers, do your job and make him move. I need to park. Mom, get back in your vehicle and quit blocking traffic. The traffic can wait for me to park. He needs to move now. This is where I start to lose it and I start to laugh pretty hard, setting my food container into the passenger seat. The cops don't really do or say much. Frankly, I suspect they were too dumbfounded and she turns back to my car. Move your car you effer, I need to bark. Mom, get back in your car and follow the patrol car in front of you to a safe parking spot now. I need ice cream, M my child needs ice cream. Well, she didn't get ice cream. After that, I see movement in the rear view and the female officer gets into the lard ass's car and starts moving it, moving it down the road out of sight. The poor kid is still reading. At this point, she loses it, screeches, and charges towards her car. Yes, cops were in her way. Yes, they all went down like bowling pins. Thankfully, the cars in the front of the blockage hadn't started moving, or someone may have died. Fed up with her bull, a cop tased her, landing the prongs in the small of her back, and four six foot six or larger sheriff's deputies proceed to attempt to gently move her over to a park bench, after quickly catching her before she could even fall over. They succeed, and the bench doesn't break, somehow. One of the officers turns towards my car, and I lower my window fully. Sir, are you okay? He seemed a tad confused, a fair reaction. I ponder for a minute and respond honestly. 
Seemed to be. Sir, am I tripping balls and drooling on myself, or did that actually happen? And the cop proceeds to freaking lose it, half falling, half leaning onto my car laughing. After picking himself up and trying to dust pollen off of himself, he tells me, Honestly, I'm not sure about it myself either right now. Have a wonderful day. You too, officer. I think I'll get some ice cream. That would have been the perfect ending, but this whale wasn't done yet. Hearing that, she made some loud noise. She had been zip tied to the bench, I guess she was too fat for handcuffs, and lunges in my direction. All she manages is to fall flat on her face as she tips the whole bench over. In case anyone cares, waffle cone, two scoops of pistachio. And there it is, that is the end of the video. Again, I want to say a massive thanks for 30,000 subscribers, and I will see you very shortly with another Reddit video.